All right, massive deal for both teams. And here's our Canucks reporter, Farhan Lalji, to talk about the Vancouver side of it. And Farhan, we didn't even get a chance to mention that Patrick Galvin signed a new contract extension with the Canucks as their GM on Wednesday. And as the ink dries on that deal, he makes a massive deal to bring in Elias Lindholm. What are your initial thoughts on the trade? Well, I think it's a good deal for both sides, including the Canucks. But as far as Alvin is concerned, I asked him this morning that given Jim Rutherford's history, do you want to get out in front of the deadline? Because Rutherford and Pittsburgh always did his heavy lifting before it all began. And you got the sense that Alvin wanted to go down that same track and that he was expecting to be busy. And as far as what this team needed, yeah, Elias Lindholm fits that bill as a top six forward because Vancouver seems to be short in that area, especially in terms of somebody who can play with Elias Pettersson. Now, it worked so well with Petey and Andre Kuzmenko a year ago. It has not gone well. So the fact is they were able to get off of that contract, which goes into next year. And now you've got a guy in, in Lindholm that by his standards maybe has had a down year this year, but he's still managing to produce points. He's two years removed from a 40-goal season. And Pettersson had some good moments and some good games playing with JT Miller and Brock Besser, but that didn't necessarily sustain itself. Ilya Mikheyev hasn't necessarily been a heavy point producer, so they need somebody to play with Pedersen, and I think Lindholm is also looking for that good fit for himself, and I think this could be a really good thing for the Canucks in their top six right now because I'll tell you, the depth in their lineup has been very good. They were able to make this deal without parting with names like Jonathan Lakaramaki Le and uh, Tom Willander and certainly Vasily Podkolzin. They were worried that they would lose those guys. They managed to keep them. So I think despite a late first-round pick, I think this is a good deal for the Canucks. You mentioned it, Farhan. Jimmy Rutherford, always active uh, before mm. the trade deadline. Do you get the sense this is just the first of many moves for the Canucks leading up to the deadline? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that even in and around this deal, we heard the name Chris Tanev as somebody that could potentially be worked into this deal, and it wasn't, but that certainly is a player of interest for the Canucks. He's got a strong history here in Vancouver and playing with Quinn Hughes. I think it'd be a good fit. I think if Tanev is going to move, I think Vancouver would be one of his preferred destinations, but depth on the back end is another item that this team needs right now, so they addressed a top six forward. I think depth in the back end, especially with Carson Soucy out, likely until the deadline, I think is their next order of business. Is there some other moves they can make nibbling around the edges of their roster to give them some depth so that they can really go for it? And he talked about not wanting to be a one-year hit. So I don't know that they're going to mortgage everything on this year, but uh, I do expect this team to still be busy in the weeks ahead. Um, it's interesting because Elias Lindholm is the UFA to be. You wonder, you know, we just had our Pierre Lebrun on the show saying that the Cox very interested in, in keeping him around long term. But Farn, what does this mean for Elias Pettersson and a potential contract extension? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say because I think one thing we've seen is now there's some stability. You got Jim Rutherford extended. You got Patrick Alvin extended. This team is clearly winning right now, which is something Pedersen wanted to see. He's made no bones about the fact that he wants to play for a winner, and top of the NHL standings right now, you don't win anymore, yet the player is reluctant to begin negotiations, meaningful negotiations this year. Could that change after he speaks to his agent at the All-Star break? Sure, it could. But one thing, the, the organization seems to be making clear, if you read between the lines, they are prepared to pay market value for Elias Pedersen. I know today Alvin talked about the fact that not everybody can take the biggest piece of the pie, but I do not think that the Canucks are going to get cheap here. So this is really going to come down to whether or not Elias Pedersen wants to be in Vancouver long term. They've answered some questions around organization, their ability to win. So if he's still hesitant, there has to be some bigger issues at play. So, you know, is the, the Lindholm move in and of itself going to uh, entice Pedersen to stay long term? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. It's just so hard to predict with this player. Uh, nice problem to have, I suppose, uh, for the Canucks right now. As you said, tops of the league, and uh, they just got better on Wednesday. Farhan Lalji, thanks so much for this.